Hello, iterative marketers. Welcome to the Iterative Marketing Podcast, where each week we give marketers and entrepreneurs actionable ideas, techniques, and examples to improve your marketing results. If you want notes and links to the resources discussed on the show, sign up to get them emailed to you each week at iterativemarketing.net. There you'll also find the Iterative Marketing blog and our community LinkedIn group where you can share ideas and ask questions of your fellow iterative marketers. Now let's dive into the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Iterative Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Robinson, and with me, as always, is the delightfully gracious Elizabeth Aaron. How are you doing today, Elizabeth? I'm good, Steve. How are you? I'm doing great. It's been a good day so far. Now, you you came in from the woods this morning. Is that correct? I did. I had a longer than normal commute. Um, we, uh, I think I mentioned this in an earlier episode, but we purchased a, a trailer this year, so we're trying to take full advantage and... The mountains aren't that too far away, so my husband and son went up and have been camping for a few days, and I went and joined them last night and then sat around the campfire. It's good for your soul. It's, it's a great way to reset. Um, and then got up bright and early this morning and drove back to make it back in time for our podcast. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes. Everything went smoothly with the new camper? It did. The camper's fun. It was interesting, though, because usually my husband is the one that does the driving out to the woods, and I never pay attention. And so I had to drive out there myself last night. So in an attempt to make sure I didn't get lost, in addition to writing me instructions, which included turn left at the large tree, which I mentioned this to you earlier, doesn't really make sense because there are a lot of large trees in the forest. But he uh, was very proud of himself. He went to Target, and he bought oversized, big, giant plates and then wrote, Liz, turn here with a big arrow and plaster those along the road. So um, I was a little nervous. And then I saw the first plate and I'm like, OK, I'm good. And then after like the sixth or seventh plate, I'm like, all right, thanks for the vote of confidence, hon. Appreciate it. So <laughs> I made it. I made it in one piece and I got back here and all is good. Excellent. So what are we talking about today? Today, we are going to take a deep dive into the C state. Um, it's part of our C think do grow give we've covered in a past episode but um you know as we mentioned in that episode it's there's a lot more we could talk about so today we're going to start with the very first state not see wonderful and so we'll we'll kind of go through a quick review of all the journey states then um talk about you know, what are we trying to do when we're when we're targeting the c state right and then um take a look at how we target them and then what we give them as far as content right Yes. And again, like we said, this is all stuff we've mentioned before. Um, we will link to our past episode that covers all of the journey states in the show notes. Um, and you can listen to that if you'd like. But for now, uh, before we jump into the more in-depth of C-State, do we want to give a quick review of the journey states? Yeah, it sounds like a good idea. So um, in, in our model, which differs slightly from Avinash Kaushik's original model of C-Think2, we have five journey states. We have the C audience, which we'll be discussing today, which is uh, the audience that is not in market for your product or service, but is still qualified to buy your product or service. We have the think state. Um, they are thinking or considering or, or, or have an inkling that they might need your product or service in the near future, um, but there's no immediacy to that need. There is no def definitive time frame or commitment to themselves or another person to buy. The do state is where we see that commitment. We see that immediacy to the need. We see a commitment to purchase, either either uh, a commitment to themselves or maybe if it's B2B, someone else in the organization or if it's B2C, someone else in the, in the household. Um, and then uh, from there is where we differ a little bit from Avinash model. Avinash's model, we have the grow and give state. Um, the grow state is the, uh, the state at which you're trying to grow, in, or the, the, the customer is growing into your organization. They are um, possibly picking up additional products or services. Um, they're possibly uh, uh, becoming uh, more avid users of your product or service. And then give is where they're ready to give back to the organization. They have grown to love your product or service or, and or brand to the extent that they're referring others, they're, they're re leaving reviews, they're sharing your content. They are part of your family and vice versa. Um, and I think it's important to note that that when we talk about these states, these are these are states of being for your 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 audience as a whole. and and you can count on everyone in your audience being in one of these five states provided they're that they're qualified to buy your product or service. You just don't necessarily know for sure which one. Um, is that a pretty pretty good pretty good sum up? 
It is. It is. I think one other um, point that I think makes sense to maybe talk about is why do we care about journey states? Um, and again, if you listen to the the previous podcast, we get into this, but just a real quick touch base and and that. <clears throat> At any given point, your audience is in one of these states and their needs and what their expectations are is going to very differ or great, greatly differ, sorry about that, um, depending on which state they're in. Um, and so it's it's important to understand not only kind of what they're thinking and feeling, but then how is that what's the best way to reach them and what's the best message to get to them. And that's really what we're going to dive in today when we start talking about the C state. So let's jump into what the goals are for your C state audience. What are you trying to achieve when you do actually reach them with uh, with some content, whether that's paid, earned, owned, or shared, right? Um, and I think it's important to remember that uh, this group is the least receptive to your content. They're not thinking about your product, service, or brand at at all. It's not it's not top of mind. It's it's the it's what they're trying to filter out. So you have to be very yeah, you have to set the bar pretty low on what you're trying to accomplish. We're really looking to create a familiarity with the brand um, and, and, and create an, an emotional connection with the brand so that when they do start to think about, about this product or about your brand or about your services, um, that you are top of mind um, for them. So they're not kind of starting from scratch. You've already appeared on their short list. Right. So you, that requires there to be some awareness of, of your brand and what it does. And then ideally through uh, repeated exposure, um, this is called the mirror exposure effect. Uh, Google it. It's really, it's really fascinating. There's lots of studies about it out there. But basically, uh, just by merely being exposed to a brand, um, uh, you begin to develop an affinity. Um, the same thing is true of a person. Um, if you see the same person on a regular basis, you begin to consider that person as as safe, as 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 comfortable, because you've you've seen them repeatedly. And and at the end of the day, our brands replace the people. We a brand is a relatively new concept. It's only a couple hundred years old. And prior to that we determined who we did business with based on the people that we knew, liked, and trust. Um, so if you didn't know, like, or trust someone, you didn't do business with them. And now we have to interact with faceless organizations and, and decide, do we know them? Do we trust them? Do we like them enough to do business with them? And so when we look at our C-state uh, uh, our goals when reaching our C-state audience, it's to get them to know, like, and trust us enough to engage with us when they enter that think or do state. We're laying the groundwork before the product or service or brand is even on their mind. Um, and so that when they, again, do start thinking about that, they've they've already got an idea. We, we pop, our brand pops into their mind, our service or product pops into their mind. And I guess one other final point is that, um, and we'll talk more about this later because it gets a bit confusing, but when we look at our C audience, we want to deliver primarily content that's appropriate for a C audience, but we also need to make sure that we deliver some content that's appropriate for other states of the journey, namely think or do, because we need to be able to detect when somebody is in think or do, and we've accidentally targeted someone that was in think or do with our C content so that we can move them to the appropriate state. We'll talk more about that later. Um, uh, before we do, though, I think we should probably jump to, to how do we target the C audience? Our C um, media is all about targeting reach and frequency and how well targeted is our channel. Um, when we take a look at um, using a billboard, for example, we've got a really great reach, but um, part of the problem is we're reaching a lot of people and maybe not necessarily the people we want to reach. Um, you know, maybe we're targeting the mom who's driving the car, but we're also getting her six-year-old sitting in the back seat and maybe grandma who's visiting. Um, and so now we've got more eyeballs on it, but not necessarily the right eyeballs. And then um, uh, the other thing that you want to watch when you're when you're measuring or, or, or trying to uh, target your media for C-State is what is your frequency. So um, um, are you hitting these people an appropriate number of times? And are you hitting the same people? And this is the biggest trick because um, oftentimes we'll take a look at at C-state media targeting. You know, a billboard is a great example. And um, uh, if we don't do that consistently enough and leave it out there and market long enough or have enough impressions with the same people, 
we might be um, uh, hitting one group of people one week and another group of people the next week and a third group the following week. And that media doesn't have the desired effect because we're not building that affinity. We're not getting in front of that same audience repeatedly. And the, the mere exposure effect doesn't apply. And it goes, I think, to the opposite of that as well. Um, you can target them too much to the point that you actually, your brand starts to turn them off a bit. And so, um, you know, I wish there was some sort of like, you know, written in stone rule, but there's not. Every brand is different. Every product is different. And so you really have to decide what that right um, frequency is is for your brand and your product and your service. Um, and, you know, there's some metrics in place that you can use to sort of, sort of try and gauge that effectiveness. And it's hard because... Um the um, you're trying to measure the effectiveness of your uh, uh, your repeated brand impressions while they're in C, and how well that improves the performance of your think and do state content, and how much that impacts revenue three, six, mo- nine, twelve months down the road. And so being able to tie that ROI back is really challenging, and there are some methods to do it, but I will say they're clunky at best, and um, uh, we are just now getting to the point where we're, we're able to run some of these tests. And I've spent a long time looking for third-party studies and case studies, and, and we're not alone in having a hard time, hard time measuring the impact of C-state content on um, uh, improvements in revenue and and conversions from from do state your do state audience down the road so Steve let me ask you this um, how do we actually go about targeting the C state well it, it, it depends a little bit on on the constraints of the medium that you're using because if you're using a more traditional medium you probably don't have the ability to include or exclude certain members of the audience. Um, based on data that you have at hand. So, um, for example, television is going to hit everybody regardless of of whether or not that person is somebody that's in your database and you know that they're in see, think, or do. It's, it's going to hit everyone. So in that case, you have to assume that the majority of that audience is in C because the reality is you have no way of knowing because you can't target it more specifically than than everybody who's watching that particular television channel at that time. Um, that doesn't mean that everybody there is in C. It just means that that's the assumption that you have to make. So that's on the traditional side. Um, what about the digital side? Well, on the digital side, usually we have the ability to filter out our audience based on their uh, the information that we have at hand, and that could be first party or third da- third party. Um, uh, first party data is the data that you're able to uh, accumulate based on either their record in your CRM or marketing automation system um, or whatever other database you have that's driving your marketing or um, based on their activity as they engage with your content. Um, Occasionally you can also use third party data for this. There are uh, a number of, of markets where there are companies that will sell uh, access to people who are actively in market for your service. And so it becomes a matter of, of, of excluding. And in all cases, uh, it, it is a matter of excluding because you can't find, it's like looking for the absence of something. You're looking for the absence of interest. That's a that, that that's not something you can go out and find. So what you want to do is you want to identify an audience that is very well targeted as far as um, uh, how qualified they are for your product or service, um, but isn't necessarily well targeted along uh, along the journey state, and then exclude those people you know that are in other states of the journey. I was gonna say, I had a hard time with this at first because in my mind, you know, I wanna, I wanna move through each process. So why, you know, I was thinking, why can't we just, the first time they come to our website, they're going to be C-state because it's the first time they come to their website. But we have to keep in mind that we have both online and offline tactics that we're using. And so they may be in due state and have never been to our site because they were in our store talking to someone. And I think, um, you know, you helped to really open my eyes to this and you use the example of, of selling washers and dryers. Yeah. So, so say we're selling washers and dryers and we, we want to 
um, target some media digitally at RC State. We're going to, to, to start out by targeting probably homeowners, right? Because if you aren't a homeowner, you don't really have a need for a washer and dryer or any place to put it. Um, so we're going to target homeowners with a certain, certain income level that, that, that they can afford our, our particular brand of washer and dryer. And then from there, we're going to start excluding audiences. So we're going to want to take all of our grow and give audience out, which is going to be our existing customer base. So if we're able to ascertain that you bought a washer or dryer from us in the last five years, we're going to exclude you. And then um, after we have that, that, that grow and give audience out, now we're going to take a look at anybody who is actively talking to a salesperson or who has engaged with do state content, you know, the buy now or, or you're going to you're going to miss out on this sale type type content or or maybe how to finance your your washer or dryer purchase content. You know, that content clearly indicates that somebody's in do. And so we can take anybody who's interacted with that do state content and anybody who's been in the store talking to a salesperson out because they're ready to purchase now. So they're not C state. Then we do the same thing with think state. Now those people aren't walking in the store, so now we're now we're looking at have they engaged in content that is 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 think state, um, and so are they engaging with Facebook content that is uh, um, ten things you need to consider when it's time to replace your washer or dryer or or three signs that your uh, um, uh, your appliances are wearing out. That's sort of content that that would mean that they're inkling that maybe it's about time, but they have no commitment you're going to take that audience and exclude it. And so what you're left with is a qualified audience, people who are homeowners and have the income level to purchase your, your washers and dryers. But as far as we know, they have not indicated any interest uh, in your products and services. They have not, um, they're not actively uh, buying and they haven't bought recently. So they're, they're, they, they're, they're not within that customer set. And once you have excluded everything else, you're left with an audience that, that you have to, by your best guess, assume is C-State uh, and, and target your media accordingly. And that's why we dangle that a, a, a little bit of think and do content in front of them is so that if we have made that wrong assumption in, in, in how we've sort of backed into the C state, we can get them into the right state. So if we put that think content out there and they engage with it, then we know they need to move to think. And then the same can be said with do. Exactly. Because they may have not uh, interacted with any of our content. They have, may have not walked into our store, but may have walked into a competitor's store. We may be completely oblivious to to the fact that they're not in C. We need to detect that. Great point. Okay. So I, I think now is a great time for us to take a quick break and talk about how we can help some folks. Before we continue, I'd like to take a quick moment to ask you iterative marketers a small but meaningful favor and ask that you give a few dollars to a charity that's important to one of our own. This week's charitable cause was sent in by Susan Ash in Montana. Susan asks that you make a contribution to the Watson Children's Shelter, an organization dedicated to providing a safe and nurturing environment for children who have experienced abuse, neglect, abandonment, or family crisis. Learn more at watsonchildrenshelter.org or visit the link in the show notes. If you would like to submit a cause for consideration for our next podcast, please visit iterativemarketing.net slash podcast and click the share a cause button. We love sharing causes that are important to you. We're back. So before we left, we talked about targeting your media um, to your C state and, and uh, what we're looking at as far as uh, how we reach that audience. Uh, now let's flip that and talk about the content that we're actually trying to deliver to our C state and what that looks like. Before we get too far in that conversation, kind of the reminder um, that I think is important to keep in mind is that our C state audience isn't even thinking about our product or service. So this is not the time to start talking about the features and the benefits and the pricing. If we start doing that at this point, then we are going to turn these people off because they are not interested in that at all. Um, instead, we want to focus on, as we mentioned earlier, building that connection um, to our brand, creating a brand affinity. Yeah, if you think about it, if you recall the last time that you bought a car, um, just before and just after you made that purchase, okay, um, uh, you suddenly started seeing that particular make and model of the car all over the road. Prior to that, you probably thought you were special in buying this particular car. And all of a sudden, you're realizing, wait, everybody else has the same car as the one I just bought. 
Well, that's not true at all. Um, what happened is that the, the, part of, the parts of our brains that we, we don't really notice are there are really, really good at filtering out the non-applicable information. And so that make and model of car, as it was driving around on the streets around you as you were navigating your way through the city, wasn't pertinent information to your brain until you started looking at buying that particular make and model of car. And then that part of your brain a switch flipped and said, okay, that's relevant information. I'm going to let that through. I'm going to let that to the conscious part of the brain so that it can process it. Now, why is this important when we talk about C-state C -state content? Is because your C-state audience is actively filtering out everything that isn't applicable to them, which includes any of your messages about product, service, features, benefits, and why you should buy now and, and, and hurry, hurry, hurry. They, they don't care. It's not applicable to them. And so this is where that, that idea of banner blindness and, and, and uh, the fact that people don't notice advertising anymore. Well, they don't if it's not relevant to them at their state in the journey. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't advertise to C-State. Instead, it means that we need to focus our creative on topics that are either relevant and are going to break through that, that filtering or that are simple enough that the mind can kind of take it in and acknowledge it without having to think too hard about it. And so when we look at it from that perspective, there's really, you know, t sort of two routes that we can go in terms of, of our C-State content. And that first one that I mentioned, um, sort of it's a relevant topic. Um, you know, we want a topic that is, is going to be relative to the prospect at that specific moment. Um, it, so, you know, you kind of put yourself in their shoes. What are they thinking about? What are they worried about? How can you break through that filter and, and get on their radar? And a great example of this is the, um, <clears throat> I know you love this commercial, Steve, but the State Farm Never Letting Go commercial. Um, you know, it's if, if you are someone who is in that phase of your life, you watch that commercial, commercial and you think, yep, that resonates with me. And now you may not have been thinking about insurance at all, but every parent out there knows the Never Letting Go commercial. Exactly. Some of them hate it, like perhaps Elizabeth. <laughs> Not a fan. But uh, um, uh, everyone can relate to that as far as, uh, uh, you know, I'm never entering that next life stage. And then and then all of a sudden you're there and you look back and, and think about how foolish you were in the past. And now the, the, the question is, do they remember that State Farm had anything to do with that commercial? And that that's a very good question. Uh, in, in my case, I happen to, but I'm also a marketer, so I'm paying attention to who's putting what messages out there. You ask a random panel of people, they may not know consciously which brand had anything to do with that commercial, but that commercial was relevant to them where they were, had nothing to do with insurance, but it was relevant to them where they were and drew, drew their attention to the extent that when they did pop the State Farm logo up there and started talking about it, that um, uh, the, the, the subconscious part of the brain was for sure had their eyes and was paying attention to the screen at that particular moment. Well, getting, getting back to that filtering idea, I remember the first time I watched it, I could not tell you who had done the commercial, but I remembered the commercial. And then the next time, I paid a little closer attention. And then the third time, I paid even closer attention. Um, and I think that was about then that I decided that it was not my favorite commercial. Um, and so then I really wanted to know who had, had designed it. But it's, it's the same way I can think of other commercials that have done the same thing. The very first time I've seen it, I may not remember it, but I remember the message. I remember the feeling that it evoked inside. Um, and now my ears are open. So next time the jingle comes on, I literally will walk from the kitchen to the living room to see, wait, what's, what's, oh, this is that commercial I like. I'm going to watch it. Who does that anymore? Exactly, exactly. So it's creating that emotional association to the, to the brand. Um, by 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 putting content that is entertaining or in, informative in a way that that isn't it's meeting the audience where they are and where their interests lie because it's not with your product or service and another example of this is when a when a brand publishes an an app and we've we've referred to these two examples in the past but the the Charmin's sitter squat app or which is elizabeth's favorite or the um why do you always bring up the commercials that i, I that that just rub me the wrong way <laughs> it's more fun that way Oh, I'm glad you're entertained. <laughs> and then uh, the the Columbia Sportswear um, uh, Not app is another example of of uh, again we're meeting the audience where their needs are, um, uh, whether they're they're bodily or or nots, 
and then uh, um, we're we're creating a positive brand association in the process. And you may not consciously remember who made that not app that you use all the time, and that's okay because you're subconsciously creating that that association. But this isn't the only you know trying to meet the audience where they are isn't necessarily the only way that we can create uh, effective C state content. We can also essentially dumb it down, right? Yes, we can. Um, and that's where we sort of, mm-hmm. we're tying, trying to engage the passive part of the mind. And when we do this, we're really focused on a very simple brand message. Our logo is very prominent. Um, there may be an emotional association or response associated with it. It may be something that's more focused on um, uh, on high repetition. But some examples of, of, you know, where we see this quite frequently is um, we see this with sports team sponsorships. Um, you know, that's a great example of Again, we've got a high frequency. You're hitting your a, a, a somewhat targeted audience. Um, again, you're getting some of that spillover, but you're still getting people that you know are in line with your product or service or brand. Um, and then billboards are another great example, and we talked about those earlier, where you can get your logo and a very simple message out. But again, that repetition is there. And so even if you're not consciously thinking about it, you still have that somewhere in the back of your mind. Now, we've talked about content that is targeted at that C state. Um, and the two routes you can go with that. But we also mentioned earlier that it's important to mix in some some think and, and maybe even some do state content in the channels that are targeting your C state. Do you want to reiterate why that is, Elizabeth? Um, yes. Before I do, though, I want to hit on one thing, because if you go back and you listen to the See, Think, Do, Grow, Give episode, we say um, very clearly uh, that you should not mix content between your states. And you shouldn't. You know, what you're saying to your C audience is what you are saying only to your C audience. It doesn't apply necessarily to your think or do and and vice versa. Where we're making this exception, why we're saying this is okay is that there is some percentage of your C audience that's in think or do, and we just don't know about it yet. And we talked about that earlier. And so we're going to take a small percentage of of the creative that we have available, the creative that we're putting out there, and we are going to introduce think content and we are going to introduce do content. Again, it's going to be a, a small percentage of the message that our audience is actually seeing. Um, if they're interested and they engage with it, then now we know that, okay, this person isn't see, this person is think, or this person is do. If they don't engage with it, again, it's a small percentage. And so uh, we haven't really done anything to turn them off to our brand. Um, but we, uh, we've we given them that opportunity that if they're ready to take that next step, it's there for them. An important thing to note with this is that we're not, uh, we, we're by no means advocating that you mix in some think messages to your C state content. We're talking about creating separate pieces that are think-oriented from the pieces that are C-oriented. So don't try and put calls to action on your C-state brand ads because all that does is it reduces the effectiveness of that C-state content. And uh, yeah, you may be able to detect a couple thinkers out of it, but really you're just turning a C-state piece of content into a think state content because your C audience isn't going to take the time to pay attention to it and any clutter will diminish the ability for it to accomplish its goal of 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 taking advantage of that mere exposure effect or of creating a an emotional association with the brand I think that's a very important distinction so thank you for making sure our our listeners um, understand that. I think uh, one other thing that we want to make very clear <clears throat> when we're talking about not only our C state, but really any of them is that we are not pushing our audiences from one state to the next. Um, only our audience can make the decision when it's ready to, when they're ready to move forward. Instead, we are using our content as sort of a, a guided path, um, a doorway for when they're ready to take that action, we're letting them know where to go. We don't want to just leave them hanging because if we leave them hanging, they're not going to know what action to take and they're not going to take any action at all. So instead, we are giving them that doorway to walk through when they are ready on their own. Thank you for reiterating that. That is so important um, to to continue the little PSA rant that we're on right now. Um, I think there's one other one other key point that I think is a great point. Great place for us to leave off on. And that is that, you know, as we've worked with clients um, and, and, and as we've been in this industry for a number of years, we find over and over and over again, brands gravitate towards think and do. And in my experience, they do this for one of two reasons. Um, They either do it because think and do is much easier to measure. You're asking that audience to 
uh, change an opinion about something you can measure later, or you're asking them to take action, and the actions are are inherently measurable. Um, and so there's this this desire to, if I'm going to spend money, know how it know how it was uh, used. The other reason why I think that a lot of some other clients uh, gravitate towards think and do is because it's that much closer to revenue. And so the idea is that if I spend this money, I'm going to get a return faster and the return is more direct and it's less risky because of that. And uh, the reality is that that's not necessarily true. You know, you've got such a small percentage of your audience that's in do state and a small percentage that's in think, you know, a, a big majority, your, your biggest is going to be that C audience. And so if you start talking to them today, if you start building that brand affinity with them today, we are greasing the skids. Um, and so that when they do move into think and when they do move into do, and we've talked about this before, um, it, they're more open to our brand. They're more open to our message. They know who we are. Um, and we've got a higher chance of getting those think and do state prospects to convert with our brand and not one of our competitors. And so I wish if there was one thing I could, you know, I feel bad. I feel like I beat this into the heads of our clients um, is just really understanding that, yes, I understand why do is important. I understand that you're seeing those conversions. And that's giving you revenue right now. But let's look to the future too, because if we're constantly focused on right now, we are never going to get ahead. We're always going to be chasing that next sale. If we start talking to our C audience now and building that brand affinity, then we're setting ourselves up for for future success. I, I've seen it where where recognizing that C audience is the difference between a positive ROI in the rest of your marketing that's attacking think or do. Without C, the rest of it doesn't even cash flow. And so it's really, really important. And on that note, before we feel like our entire audience feels like we've been preaching at them for an hour, um, I think it's a great point for us to wrap up. So I want to thank everyone for making time for us this week. And until next week, onward and upward. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on YouTube or your favorite podcast directory. If you want notes and links to resources discussed on the show, sign up to get them emailed to you each week at iterativemarketing.net. There, you'll also find the Iterative Marketing blog and our community LinkedIn group where you can share ideas and ask questions of your fellow iterative marketers. You can also follow us on Twitter. Our username is at I-T-E-R, the number eight, I-V-E, or email us at podcast at iterativemarketing.net. The Iterative Marketing Podcast is a production of Brilliant Metrics, a consultancy helping brands and agencies rid the world of marketing waste. Our producer is Heather Ullman with transcription assistance from Emily Bechtel. Our music is by Seastock Audio Music Production and Sound Design. You can check them out at seastockaudio.com. We'll see you next week. Until then, onward and upward.